Sir, Christmas passed. New Year's Day passed. No terror attack, no bomb. Thankfully, we have effective, professional, and responsive uniform teams working to keep us safe. Singapore Police Force, the Singapore Civil Defense Force, Singapore Armed Forces, and the ISD. But terrorism is not a fight they are to battle against alone. Every Singaporean has a role to play. Singapore is a prized jewel because of what Singaporeans stand for, meritocracy, diligence, multiracialism, unity. Because of these attributes, many evildoers seek to do us harm. But should a terrorist threat ever vest on our shores, it is those very attributes that will enable us to overcome the disunity terrorism seeks to sow. Each Singaporean has a social role to provide a united multiracial response in the aftermath of a terror attack. That duty cannot be left to the home team alone. Every Singaporean has a role to play. That way, our precious Singaporean unity, so unique to the world, will be preserved. There are two reasons why the role of each Singaporean is particularly important. Firstly, the Singaporeans would probably be the first ones near the scene, and how they respond is important. How Singaporeans react in the midst of a terror attack is very important. Secondly, to provide a multiracial response to the disunity that terrorism seeks to sow, the whole of the community needs to be involved in the response. Relationships and mutual trust and understanding which undergird multiracialism is not something that can be manufactured or imposed top down. While the government can play a facilitating role, ultimately, every Singaporean needs to, be, needs to, needs to play a part. This community holistic approach to counter-terrorism is supported by a recent study that showed that Malaysia's previous terrorist rehabilitation program was perhaps not all that effective, as it was a top-down and only focused at the religious aspect of violent extremism, with majority of rehabilitated or so-called rehabilitated terrorists still holding on to their original beliefs and continued giving financial support to violent gr groups. In contrast, Indonesia's variety of rehabilitation programs run by the government, civil society groups, and the local community was more comprehensive in addressing the variety of factors, taking into account the person's feelings of dissatisfaction with life, weak ties with family members, poverty, and ideology. Another example is a community-based women's group in Bangladesh, which equips women to promote social cohesion and battle violent extremism in their roles as mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters who shape the values of those in their family and community. Last year, MHA announced that by 2019, every one of the 89 constituencies will have undergone at least one crisis response exercise. Even as such exercises are being rolled out to prepare Singaporeans for a terror attack, it is important for every Singaporean to participate and play their important role in keeping Singapore safe when a terror attack vests on our shores. How can MHA foster such a relationship with Singaporeans to achieve that goal of a strong Singapore in the face of a terror attack. My second cut, sir. Last year, it was reported that the length of time needed to radicalize an individual has decreased from two years to as little as one or two months. Self-radicalization through the internet is also a threat. A Straits Times article in July last year reported that the internet was a common link in all 15 cases of Singaporeans who were radicalized and dealt with under the ISA since 2014. In Indonesia, in the past, a method of recruitment was through online games. Recently, recruitment attempts has, have also intensified. For instance, the terrorist recruitment video in September 2017 
featuring the Singaporean Abu Ikail, was analyzed as a stepped up attempt to reach out to a younger and better educated audience in a predominantly Malay Muslim region. Our unique social fabric in Singapore, especially our multiracial way of life, is harmed by plans for thoughts of and actions towards violent extremism. Terrorism is an affront to all our communities in Singapore. It is an affront to the Chinese community. It is an affront to the Malay community. It is an affront to the Indian community. It is an affront to the Eurasian community. Therefore, how can we bolster our laws to prevent the spread of radicalized teachings that promote violent extremism? 